what are the R and D uh, incentives available, and how do we get access to them? Well, the cornerstone of the Australian government, and that these regimes exist around the world, because the fight for the innovation dollar, which I think we talked about when I was here last time, is really strong. So people have a lot of choice around where to park their projects now globally. Um, but what the Australian government has had in place for many, many years is their main flagship program being the R&D tax incentive and a lot of other direct government grants. So the R&D tax incentive is set up. It has two tiers. So in this case, SMEs 20 mil and under can access a refundable um, tax offset of up to 43 and a half cents in the dollar. That's really attractive. It's almost like grant funding, but it's a self entitlement program. Um, and if you're over 20 million, you can access up to eight and a half cents. So it's it's a nice sort of if you're in a tight profit making business, eight and a half cents is is a nice nice thing to get. Um, we have other direct supporting programs, and another one that we work a lot with our corporate clients here at Grant Thornton is the Export Market Development Program. And that is actually a program that um, has been changed a lot in the past 12, 24 months and has moved to a forward grant program. But again, it's an entitlement program, so it's not competitive. So often when we think about grants, we think, oh, we have to go and compete. We don't know if we're going to get the money. Um, so it's a, a little bit harder to get because they're giving, you know, uh, they, want to, they want to support those sort of really blue ribbon projects. With the MDG, it's about helping companies and people, because it's sole traders can also access it, so that micro businesses can set up and access support for marketing offshore. So they can get um, some forward funding now, but they have to spend it to get it. it like all things, it's, it's complex, but we do help clients get it um, on a regular basis. The FY23 program is about to open, and we'll talk about that as we go through. Um, but for me, and then there's um, what, what's also coming is the patent box. Um, and if you want me to, I can touch on that um, now, Dinesh, if you'd like. Absolutely, absolutely. So the government's also um, adopted and announced in last year's budget that they'd introduce a patent box. Pretty limited application at this, uh, this time, but it's going to support corporates to undertake and, and protect their IP here in Australia, and they're going to get a concessional um, income tax rate of 17% versus what they'd normally get, which can vary between 25, 26, yeah. yeah, 25 to 30%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's effective. The bill was announced and was tabled in parliament in February, unfortunately didn't get passed before the government went into caretaker mode. So it's still a bill in parliament. Um, it applies to patents granted or issued after 11th of May, 2021 and is in respect of income years starting on or after 1 July 2022. I just wanted to get that right from yeah. reading the notes. Um, so it's, it's the next financial year. Yes, year. Yeah. and it's only for future granted patents, so it's not going to be retrospective. In the budget, they extended it to ag tech and also to um, clean Maybe technologies. Clean tech. yeah. So, But they, they're saying that they think that the program will cost about $120 million. So I don't see that as a big bang sort of impact but I suppose if you are doing patents, you know, it is a, a nice thing to get. So if, you, if you're wavering on that big cost of doing a patent, now's the time to think about, well, should we now go and do it if you're in those sectors? So biotech, ag tech and clean tech. We're hoping that as the program continues to build, um, that they'll expand to all sectors, which would be a, a nice outcome for SMEs. Fantastic. Um, thanks, Sandy, uh, for touching on uh, on the patent box as well. Now, coming back to the research and development grant, what are the uh, new changes to that R&D regime that came about in this uh, budget? Yeah, nothing in particular, but there were a few things from a, um, an administrative or regulatory point of view that I really wanted to highlight today. So for those SMEs out there that claim computer software or develop computer software, there's been some new guidance released. Now, it's really important to have a look at that because it gives you some really key things that the regulators are looking for. And it really hinges on, I think, two things. Record keeping is really important. And if you're interested, we can certainly send you through some more detail if you'd like it. Um, but they, they talk a lot about keeping records and they talk about evidencing unknown outcome. They just don't expect you to say, look, I can see this idea. I'm just going to go and do it. You have to show to the regulator that you've done some research that it doesn't exist elsewhere. 
Now, this is sometimes a bit of a hole, and we do help um, corporates do what we call state-of-the-art searches, so things where you can actually check from a technical standpoint that people haven't done what you're thinking about doing. Um, that guidance is very clear that, that the regulator wants to see that evidence. So that's, that's something that's new. Um, it's supplementary to the guide to interpretation, so it, it sort of intermingles, but I think it's a really good thing that this is out there. Um, but that focus on unknown outcomes is something I want people to, to recall from, from the discussion today. Um, another thing that's come out is a clinical trials determination. And essentially what that means is the government is saying, look, if you do these certain type of trials, you, they will be eligible for activities. There is some practical implications on how to apply for that. So please feel free to reach out to us if you are doing clinical trials as to how to apply for it under the R&D program, and it covers certain types of trials, so uh, phase one, two, three, and some pre-market pilot stages. So again, just have a think about, because that makes, it streamlines the process of you applying for the program. So that's a really good positive step for, for the, bio, uh, the biotech sector. Um, I think it just allows them to really know, right, we're going to get this support, they won't get reviewed if they apply the determination. So. There's a bit in that, so I recommend again reaching out to your advisor to, to Grant Thornton here. We've got a team of 20 specialists just on innovation who can talk to you about this. And we also saw some um, administration changes just clarifying about um, RSPs and, and some other things. So whilst no big bang issues in the budget, Dinesh, there is some meaty things out there that you need to be across to make sure that your claim is as robust and supportable as it can be. And also if you sit in that clinical trial space that you can access it quite, quite easily, but you need to do it in a certain way. So just reach out to get some help on that. But you know, pretty good. I think the government's really um, got behind supporting innovation in Australia, which is absolutely what we need. We need a strong innovation support system here for us to be a global player. And I'm really pleased to see that they've got that support behind these programs. Thank you.